Thanks to Valve, Steam and its generous discount and sales, buying PC games has never been more up to date, more available or cheaper than ever before. As a result, libraries across the platform have accumulated more and more games, to the point that most of us have more games than we might ever play. As an experiment, I decided to make a list of all my current Steam titles, put them from a random number generator, play that chosen title for as long as necessary, and finally create a short and concise video review. If you have any of these titles in your library, or are interested in giving them a try, then make yourself comfortable. I'm James D. And it's full steam ahead. Swear to me. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the fireflies is true. I swear. There are some games that have improved the medium in significant ways. Storytelling, world building and narrative have all come on leaps and bounds since gaming's introduction, and alongside advancements in presentation and systems design, stories haven't just become more sophisticated, but have expanded beyond the breadth of genre fare. Thanks to the talents of voice actors, animators and script writers, some games will leave indelible emotions on us years down the line. Games like Painkiller, Hell and Damnation. Daniel. Daniel. Daniel, wake up. He's coming. Daniel Garner. I have an offer for you. Oh, yeah? I have one too. Die! I'm afraid that's my line. But now, do you want your Catherine back? I'll take you to her. Right. I've heard that before. Collect seven legions of souls for me. And you'll meet your beloved wife. How can I be sure you're not lying like the others? There are only two things in the world that are certain. And you're talking to one of them. Yeah, and you're not the tax collector. Unfortunately, the stupidity of its cutscenes also applies to the gameplay, and like its name suggests, Painkiller is an experience that left me numb and lethargic. Despite its bombastic presentation and design mandate, the brainlessness of its gameplay left me itching for the craftsmanship of the games it tries to emulate. As a what-if scenario for the first-person shooter that never grew out the identity and sophistication of Doom and Duke Nukem 3D, it somehow manages to make these games feel nuanced and embarrassing. Your adventure takes you for four episodes with three levels and a boss fight bookending each one, but each encounter plays out in exactly the same manner. You walk through a red sigil, enemies are filtered in, you clear them out, and then move on to the next red sigil, up until the point you find the golden gateway. Some distinct set-piece moments are sprinkled towards the later end of the game, with one being a literal on-rail section quite unlike anything else in Hell and Damnation. But it's a disappointment that each level didn't have its own unique spin on the usual sprinting and shooting. It's a shame, as there's a lot of imagination behind the art design of both painkillers, arenas and enemies. One level in particular, you'll be soaking through brooding gothic architecture in combat with corrupted knights and warlocks, and at just the right angle, it conjures images of Dark Souls and Orlando. A Chinese opera house, haunted boarding school, and a demonic theme park aren't just particularly inspired choices for designs also, but they show the breadth of variation you'll see in this 12 level campaign. Enemies too follow this approach to simple but distinct looking design, 
We're using the same stock rotation as shapes and sizes, but rebranding them on a level by level basis. And then there's the boss encounters, which were initially breathtaking, up until the point that you realise that their rules and engagements are no more complex than the mindless hordes you've previously faced. Weapons also have a lot of imagination in their looks, but also in their engagement options. A frost throwing shotgun, a grenade lobbing chain gun, and the game's signature weapon, a skull mounted sword blade shooter with a soul sucking energy whip, all feel suitably killer for the job. However, the enemies you face don't ask you to be smart with your shooting. Instead, waves of enemies will lazy follow you around the arena, lining themselves up for a serving of firepower. In some cases, it feels a little like mowing the lawn, and one weapon in particular chops enemies up like perennials for quick and easy kills. As an update for a game released in 2002, at the time something of a viable alternative for the wave of story driven shooters that were beginning to crop up, years before the development of Half-Life 2, Bioshock or even Modern Warfare, it doesn't quite have the same effect it used to. Last year's Doom reboot certainly manages the manic energy and old school design sensibility that Painkiller riffs on, but actually managed to make meaningful improvements to the formula as well as retaining its previous sophistication. There's a lot of better first person shooters out there that you should consider spending your time and money, but if you're looking for a title that wholeheartedly embraces B-movie stupidity and a schlock horror aesthetic just in time for Halloween, well, Painkiller Hell and Damnation can certainly get a recommendation for that, but just remember to leave your brain at the door. As always, your mileage may vary in regards to performance. There's a link to the game and its system settings in the description below. You shall have no gods. You shall not make any idols. You shall not misuse the name of God. You shall keep the Sabbath holy, respect your father and mother. Damn! Guess that's right. Fuck yeah.